So you just spawn in the world of Calradia and you're wondering how to get your campaign quick started so you can conquer the entire world? Well, you've come to the right video. I'm gonna be skipping the character creation part in this video, although I might do a video on it in the future, and I'm gonna talk about how to turn you from a level 1 bandit without any money into a level 100 Chad. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about trading, tournaments, fighting, and my personal strategy whenever I start a new save game. If this video gets 50 likes, I'm gonna be making a caravan guide so you know where to spend your money after you earn it and get some passive income while you're at it. And if you guys are enjoying the content, please consider subscribing, it really helps the channel grow. Trading is the way to make money in this game. It doesn't matter if it's early game, mid game, late game, already kicked everyone's ass game. If you need money, you're probably gonna be trading for it. The strategy is pretty simple. You buy items for as cheap as you can and then you sell them for more that you bought them for. Now, let me show you how it works in the world of Calradia. After getting to the trade screen and getting to the miscellaneous so we can check the goods, we can over, over any one of these, go to this little screen and check the price right here. Right now you can see that cheese has a green price and if you over over that, you can check that this item is 55% cheaper than your average. Which means, if you buy this, the chances are, in other towns, it's going to sell for more than this. On the other hand, if we check the linen, for example, it's red. Which means it's more expensive than the average. Which means you want to stay away from buying this item, or you want to go to other towns buy linen and come sell it at Licoron. Something else you want to pay attention to is your inventory capacity because it's limited and because of that it limits the amount of goods that you can carry from one place to another which in the, at the same time is going to mean that it's going to limit your profits. So there are two ways to upgrade or make your capacity higher. You either get more troops or you buy pack animals. What are pack animals? There are sumter horses, mules and pack camels. So you buy those and that way you ensure that you can carry more stuff. I'm just going to buy a couple right here so you can see. Also, you don't want to have too many animals because you'll get a penalty, which is the herd penalty, which is going to make you very slow. So, if I have right now 10 battle troops, I got to always take one away because that's me. I'm the 10th guy. So that we have 9 people. I can carry 9 Sumter horses or 9 mules or four Sumter horses and five mules. You get what I mean. The trade skill is of course very important to trading because each skill level higher that you get, it will increase the trade penalty reduction. So you, trading becomes even better and more profitable. The first two, although I can argue the first three skills are, are also very important because not only do they mark your profits, mark item prices relative to average prices, and they give you trade rumors on the workshops or on the caravans depending on what route you want to go. So I quickly jumped into another character just to show you how those perks work. If you take a look at the right hand side of the screen, the butter is green. Why is that? It's because I bought it for less than 13. So that means that if I sell it for this price, I'm going to be making money. The meat on the other hand, I, I did not. I bought it for cheaper than this. So I don't want to sell it right now. That's the first perk. The second one. On this side, I can check very quickly without having to, you know, oh, let me see, oh, let's see if this is actually cheaper, you know, I don't need to do that. I can just immediately say or immediately check, okay, our wood is cheap, buy that, boom, easy. Also, the trade rumors, you just over, over a good and you can check for how much you can sell it or buy it at other towns as long as you either been in that town recently or you have a workshop or a canopy going through that's going to be giving you the trade rumors now let's move on to tournaments tournaments are very good in the early game uh they change it a bit in the 1.7.0 patch so now the rewards are a bit more diverse and they depend on how many nobles are actually in the tournament which we'll check in a second and also now if your companion wins the tournament you also get the reward in your inventory so you can you know sell it or keep it or you know whatever but get some extra money out of it the good thing about tournaments is that they are a hundred percent risk free if you lose the tournament well you lose the tournament but if you win you can win big also there's a zero percent campaign time investment because well the game is literally paused while you're doing the tournament they're also very good for early money renown and free skills so why the hell are you not doing tournaments get your name out there man well but how do you check if a town is hosting a tournament easy 
If you're close and you see that the town has this little helmet icon, go in. Another way you can do this is by entering the arena and talking to the tournament master. If you talk to this guy, you can literally ask him, are there any tournaments going on in nearby towns? And they'll tell you where there are tournaments going on. So as you can see, this tournament has actually eight nobles present, which means the reward is probably going to be good. So you jump in and I'm just going to bet on myself. Now, the more you come to the side and the more you come closer to getting to the final battle, the less you can bet. So you, if you're very confident, bet early so you can get more money, right? And I'm just going to join and I'm going to see if I can win this or not. So I lost this tournament and lost not only the price, but also all the money that I bet. So yeah, not good. But you, you're a Chad, so you're going to win all the tournaments, right? If you're really confident about winning all the tournaments and you're really good at them, you might want to invest into deep pockets in the roguery tree. That means that you can double the amount of betting that you can do in the tournaments. Also, the more you upgrade your fighting skills, so I'm going to say these three, these other three, and writing and athletics are also important, the more chances you have of doing more damage, of being more powerful, and of winning the tournaments. I mean, fighting is pretty self-explanatory, right? It's literally the main objective of the game. But I still felt like I had to talk about it a little bit. The main objective is literally to win the battles, take the loot, take the prisoners, and then just sell them in other towns. Along with all that, you'll also get renown, so you can upgrade your clan tier. The bigger and stronger enemy parties you fight, the better the rewards might be. But be careful, don't bite off more than you can chew, because you might get defeated and taken prisoner yourself. Now, there are a lot of good skills when it comes to fighting. First of all, the same combat skills that are useful for tournaments are useful in here as well because you're going to be fighting these battles yourself. Although, if you sim the battles, tactics is a very good perk to level up. Scouting is good as well because it makes you faster. That means that you can catch up or run away from enemy parties faster. Stewardship means you can increase your party size a lot. And that's good. The bigger army you have, the more chances you have of winning battles. Medicine is also good because it means that you can increase your, the yielding rate of your character, of your troops, and your companions. And as well as lowering the chances of getting casualties in battle. Along with that, if you want to get even more loot from all these battles, you want to upgrade your roguery skill because, well, as you can see, it increases the battle loot you get. So to finish things off, I'm going to talk about a strategy that I always use to quick start my saves. I have a brand new character here. All I'm going to do is I'm going to go to some of these villages, get some recruits and make my way to Licoron. So I've made it to Licoron with seven troops, eight if you include myself, and I'm going to straight in go to the trade screen. Once I'm here, I'm going to buy a couple of Sumter horses. Well, three. Three is not a couple, but still. I'm going to go straight to Miscellaneous. Sort by price and check that hardwood is very cheap, as well as clay. Now why is that? In the beginning of every single save game, the economy is a bit wonky. And to quick start it, what the developers have done is in certain towns, there's a lot of a single good, or a couple of them. In Lake Orion, for example, that's hardwood and clay. It's super cheap. So you want to take advantage of that. And you want to buy as much as you can and go sell it in other towns. So I've made it to Poros, making sure to stop in every village and try to get more recruits. And let's go jump right into the trade. As you can see, I bought this for 3 dinars and I'm going to sell at least the first one for 43. The price is going to drop a lot after that, but it's still a very good price. After this, I'm going to buy a couple more horses. And again, it's not going to be a couple, but it's going to be a couple of a couple. I'm going to buy four. And I'm going to check what's super cheap in Poros. So as you can see, beer is 46% cheaper in uh, Poros. So I'm going to buy it and I'm going to go back to Licoron and sell everything. So I made it to Licoron and I'm going to sell all of this beer that I bought for 26 dinars. Look at the profits. Also, I'm going to jump straight right back to the hardwood uh, trade and I'm going to get a lot more of that. Also, as you can see, the trade skill is going to level up so quickly. I'm already at 26 and I can get my first perk. I'm going to go for wholesaler because I'm trading goods. So now I made my way to Vostrom, still going into every village trying to get some more troops because you want to get to at least 20 recruits in the early game so you can get a little bit of protection. Let's see what we can sell here. As you can see, the, this hardwood is selling for a lot, so I'm going to sell everything. And I'm going to be buying grain. After
after that, another up on to Poros, and I'm gonna be selling all that grain that I bought for 4 dinars for 17. Also, I'm gonna be buying some hides, they're usually very cheap here as well, and I'm gonna be selling them back at Likoron. As you can see, easy profits. And the price of hardwood is still super cheap, so I'm gonna be buying even more. So I went around and traded between these three villages a couple more times, and I'm already at 8k dinars in the first couple of days. It's crazy. Now you might ask, but where do I go from here? Well, now what you want to do is you want to keep trading and keep getting more money until you get to around the 15k to 17k uh, dinar mark. Once that's done, you want to probably start getting some workshops or caravans. If you want to know how to make some very nice workshops to make you a good amount of passive income, you can check my workshop guide, which is going to be linked in the top right corner and also in the description down below. If you guys want to get into some caravan uh, stuff, well, make sure to leave a like, as I've said in the beginning. After that, make sure to keep leveling up your character, okay? Do tournaments, get into fights with bandits especially, but if you can get into fights with like other good lords but that you can win, then make sure to do that as well. Level up your clan tier to 1, that way you're going to be able to get even more troops and you can get into some mercenary work which uh, also pretty good. Yeah, that's about it. I uh, hope now that you can turn yourself into a level 100 boss in a couple of hours. If you guys have any more tips that you want to share with other players, leave them down in the comment section below. I always love to learn more about this game. It's, uh, yeah, I'm getting hooked onto it again. And as always, if you enjoy the content, please feel free to subscribe and like. It really does help the channel grow. Other than that, that's been it. And I hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see everyone next time. Peace. Thank you.